Could be Smeavis, Lane's bumpy. But it's a lovely drive here, through the trees. They must have been hundreds of years old, these oaks, and there's a few ashes and beech. Here we are. It's a lovely sight when you see the lake at the end of this lane. Super place. Well, that's a bit overcast at the moment. There's a lot of flies around the windscreen. I hope we're not going to get a storm later. No? Well, it's a bit overcast, but um, lake looks lovely. It's absolutely super. Oh. Well, let's get the gear out. These lovely ferns, it really is nice just to be here, let alone the fishing. The fishing's often just a bonus. It's super to be in such a wonderful environment. Oh, here we are. This is a swim I fancy. This is where I saw some tench fizzing the other morning. Before I put the bait out, I'm going to have a little look through the bins. Oh, there's one out there now. There's another. I don't think I'm going to need too much bait here this morning. Seems to be a natural feeding area. So I'm not going to upset it too much by putting out too much bait. I'll just put a few balls out. Here's my ground bait. It's got all sorts of lovely things in it. It's got sweet corn, tares, hemp, maggots, carsers. It's got salmon fry crumb to give it a bit of a tang. And it's all bound together with maize meal and breadcrumbs. And it's been in the car now for a couple of days. And it binds together really well for throwing. Of course, there's not a pong. <sighs> Smells rather like my homemade wine, this, this ground bait. It's that fermented. Doesn't say a lot for my wine. <clears throat> oh, this is binding together really nicely. No, both of them's got no worries at all. <clears throat> well, I've rigged up a couple of feeder rods back at the car with fixed pattern osters, and I've got a bucket of breadcrumbs for ground bait. And I've already got the buzzers and rod rests set in. Let's just put these down and have a look through the bins. It's not easy to see with this ripple. Oh, yeah, there they are. <laughs> Magic. Got a 12 hook on. Three grains on this goes on just about nicely. Hook length's only about six inches of four pound test, and the real line itself is uh, six pounds. I like using six pound strain because it's feeder fishing, it takes an awful lot of knocking about on the bottom of the lake and through weed, and the actual strain of continually casting feeders, feeders does tend to. Put an awful amount of strain on monofilament. Try cocktail. They're a good combination, brandlings and, and sweet corn. Often brings about quite aggressive bites. 
There's a good ripple blowing again now, too. Super indicators, these optonics. You get a single bleep tone, whether the line goes backwards or forwards. And these, what? This one straight away. Goodness me. God. Oh, it's got stuck into my head. I think we'll have to let the line go slack, see if it'll swim out. This sometimes worked. The fish swims into some weed. And when it feels, here he goes again. It feels the relaxation of pressure from you, and then it it swims out. And it started to go then. It starts to go. Let's see if we can. Go. Oh dear me! No, it's still in there. Oh, no, here we go. Oh. Yes. God damn it. That always works, huh? Eh? They're crafty, those tanks, they... You think you're going to pull for a break or... pull the hook out of them, and then they... they come out of the weed as soon as you relax the line. It feels like a good fish. Yes, oh, it's a soup fish. Oh. Dear me, I have to be careful with this. Oh, come on. God, that cocktail worked quickly. Goodness me. Nice looking fish. It's one of the quickest things I've ever caught. <laughs> that couldn't have been out there two seconds. Oh, beautiful big tench. Look at those enormous great fins. Super fish. They really are quite unlike any other sort of fish. I think we're going to have a good day today. some more corn out before we put the rods out. Great, just right. God, that's a good stream. Now, I thought I'd got another bite then, but I think it's only a line bite. I've had a lot of problems with this this morning. The, about 35 yards out, there's quite a big clump of hornwort on the bottom. And, my line, even though I've got the rod set up high, my line's going along the bottom and then it's going up and over this hornwort where the bait is, and then the tench are coming along off the bottom, feeding, coming up, going through the hornwort, and they're giving me line bites and the bobbin's constantly giving me little tiny twitches. There's another one there. <laughs> if I didn't have that sort of... Uh, <laughs> if it wasn't this sort of contour on the bottom with the weed, I'd have hit that. Very confusing, that's very difficult. I think what I'm going to have to do is only hit something that just carries on after two or three bleeps, which means that the line has to be moved five or six inches. It's a pity because some of those are probably bites and I'm having to miss them. <laughs> One of the nice things when I'm fishing is if it's a bit quiet, I can always do a bit of photography and I love photographing them. The estate lakes that I fish. Actually, this is quite an interesting thing here. This culvert is, is usually where the, the lake flows out into a, a stream and that runs into a little river a, a few miles away. I don't know how boggy this is here, but it... It's getting a bit softer now. Here we 
know. Oh, it's a mussel shell. I'm sure this is one of the reasons we're having such trouble catching the, the tench down this end of the lake today. All this thick leaf mould, it's full of midge larvae. And, of course, this is what it's like out there to where I was fishing. It's exactly the same, perhaps rotted down a bit more. And, of course, amongst it is, is these swan mussel shells. Beautiful things, these. Some people burnish them up and put them on the sideboard. And these are a good tench bait in themselves anyway. Oh! God, there's some flies about here today. This brown algae bloom stops the sunlight reaching quite a lot of the plants that would flourish in this lake. So at the moment, there's not an awful lot of weeds, but uh, this is quite a nice little patch here. It's a, it's a mixture of hornwort. There's some quite large patches probably been rooted up by water birds. That usually grows in two or three feet, perhaps deeper water. And then we've got this amphibious pistol with these lovely little knotty plants on, um, flowers on them. Some snails on that one. And we've got a, a branch here that's all covered in all sorts of things. It's got caddis grubs on it in their little cases of various types. And it's under here where it's been resting against the bottom, it's got lots of little larval cases of the bloodworm, which is the larvae of the common midge. Probably the most important fly in terms of fish food that uh, anglers could possibly have. Some little green luminous things there. I don't know. Let's put it back. There's also quite a few fry in this little bay. In fact, it's probably one of the only areas around here that they can find refuge because of all the perch in the lake. In fact, there's millions right by my feet now, little tiny roach, all about an inch long. Probably this year's, well, they would be this year's fry. Of course, the secret with feeder fishing is consistently hitting the same spot. Fortunately, the wind isn't too bad, so I'm managing to do that. In fact, I did hit a, a fizz of bubbles right on, on target then, and when this happens, I'm often expecting a bite straight away. I'll just put the buzzer on quickly. I can't repeatedly strike at that. No, here's a fish. Goodness me. God, I thought that was a line bite starting there, but... That's a good fish. It's kiting a long way to the left. <sighs> Come away from that other line. Lovely green in the sunlight, super fish tench. You really are. See where the yuck is then. Come on. Come on. Well, the other one's going now. <laughs> right. Hmm. Let's put him in the net. Knock the rod off the other. Oh, she's going bananas here. Ah. <laughs> I think I've lost this one. No, goodness me, it's still on. <laughs> That's the trouble you get fishing with two rods occasionally. Let's get the hook out of this net. 
Well, I've done it again. Right, I'll sling it over there out of the way. Here we go. God oh, dear, mate, it never rains, it pours. This is a nice fish. Oh, yes. Oh, by the way, it's fighting. It feels like one of those, those male tents. They really do thump. You get a four pound male tent, and it fights as hard as a. Whoa! <laughs> Six pound female. Come on, you little devil. Oh, this is a scrappy little fish. Oh, I think I'm gonna hand him in for a change. It's nice sometimes just to pick them out of the water, not get them caught up in the net. There we are. There's a little one. And it's a, f oh, it's a female as well. It's not a male. It's the smallest one I've had today. Two in the net in about two minutes flat. It's ridiculous. Sometimes fishing's too easy. Right, the swim's gone a bit dead now. I've just put a load more corn out. I think what I'm going to go and do is try that swim down there on the staging for an hour or so. Uh, I've got my float rod all, all ready at, back at the car, so I'll just take some bait. And we land in there. <laughs> Goodness me, this staging's taken some hammer since I last stepped upon it. I don't know whether it's really gonna hold my weight. Looks like one of those dilapidated scenic railways. Right, obviously not gonna be able to move about very much on here. I think I'm gonna have to Get all the gear ready first and even put the keep net in, even though I haven't caught anything yet. Otherwise, it's going to mean a lot of clonking about. I don't need a stool, I can sit on the keep net bag. It's handy having a bit of wire tied to the top of that keep net. There's no space for a bank stick here. Well, at least there's a few bubbles coming up. Despite the br brightness of the sun. All right. Let's put a few magnets out. Start off with three. And as these tench aren't often fish for, I've got a 14 hook direct to two and a half pound line. Yeah. <laughs> Look at that. I'll put two maggots out on the bottom and I've got a caddis case back. These are the... No, there's no caddis in it. These are the shells made from all little bits and twigs. They're quite intricate, really, of the sedge flies, known to most people as the caddis. And there's this little grub inside, not unlike a maggot. Um, and all, all that's sticking out the front of the case is it's legs and head and its translucent sort of succulent body is inside. Good. Ah, here we are at last. Ah, uh, yeah. This is a tench. OK, 
characteristic shaking of its head and over the rug goes. It feels like a good one as well. It's keeping quite deep. Oh, it's going round there again. Come on. Where you come? Picking up a bit of weed around the tip ring there. Ah, oh, there she is. Oh, that's a good looking fish. Oh, it's not ready yet. It's not ready yet. Come on. I'm worried about these coming in too close and losing it under the staging. I think we'll... Come on. <laughs> Come on. Whoa, there she is. Come on, baby. Go. Come on. Oh, yeah. Oh. Beautiful. What a super fish. Well, that must be close on five pounds. Beautiful tench. Lovely little red eye. That's one of the nice things about tench. They've all got teddy bear eyes. Let's have a look him and pop him straight in the net. Beautiful fish, that one. Really super. <laughs> Oh, actually, considering the conditions, it's been super fishing. It's probably all down to feeder fishing in shallow water. I think it's something to do with the way the, the tench home in on the feeder. When it hits the surface, that sound is very distinct, and, of course, they associate that with food. And I had a little bleep then. Oh, that's all right. And, of course, they home in on that noise. And the more you put the feeders out there, the more fish move into the swim. And I think that's the main reason that I've had so many bites. Some of them quite instant, within seconds almost, of, of the feeder hitting the bottom and me tightening up, putting the bobbin on, wham, it's up its beam. Yes! Cool. Here we go again. God, this... Oh. That's the good thing about these long carbon rods. They really do pick the line up well. And when you feed a fishing at distance, there's awful... Often a lot of slack line where it goes up and over the wee beds and just simply lying in the, the undertow. So it feels like a very good fish, this one. Oh, it's going to the left under the other line there. I'm going to have to do a bit of, go, a bit of quick stuff here. Oh, let me knock the other rod off. No, we're OK. Oh, magic. Come on, baby. Oh, yes, it is a nice fish. Beautiful. Oh, come on, I'm going to lose it now. In you come. Oh. Oh. Give it a little bit. Oh, I'll ease up on the clutch. So it's that last few seconds there when you've got it on a short line. You're most likely to lose. Picked up a lot of weed. Oh, lovely. Picked up a hell of a lot of weed then. Oh, yes, it is a nice fish. Oh, another big four. Oh, beautiful. Oh, super fish. Aren't you lovely? Let's have a look and put in the net. What a lovely end to the day. I didn't realise I'd caught so many. Oh, there's a little perch. Let's have a good look at them as we put them back one by one. Oh! Oh! <laughs> These males are lively. There you go. Oh, that's a nice big hefty female. Beautiful fish. Oh, they're so slippery. There we are, female and male. The difference is now plainly obvious. The male with its huge, proud pelvic muscles and these huge, great spoon-shaped fins, which cover, just about cover its backside up there, compared to the 
lovely sleek lines of the female and its smooth flat fins. There couldn't be more difference between two fish. <laughs> Absolute magic. <laughs> Thank you.